talk about a game now that's going to live in infamy in common history. It's one of those games, uh, you know, I, I think of a lot of the games in the past that really stand out as crazy games through all, you know, uh, 68 years of common hockey. And this is the one it's going to be in the top 10 someday, uh, the game against Jacksonville. So to reset, you win the game the night before. Uh, we have a hit on Brady Shaw from Dejan Mingo. It was one of those things that happened right in front of your bench. It was in overtime. I could see it. You could see Mingo lining him up. You could see Shaw. You could see the train coming. Brady had his head down. Mingo came up, and it looked like he left his skates. It looked like he came up with the elbows. It looked like an obvious call, but it wasn't. So you don't get the call, but you get the win. So now you've got the intrigue of the next day. The league is going to look at this. So already you've got a tense morning because you're waiting for a ruling from the league. So you're thinking if Mingo gets suspended, that that will quell everything. But uh, that didn't happen. Yeah, we wanted some retribution a little yeah. bit. You know, somebody to, to take some fault in, in their actions, you know. And um, it wasn't just that game. To, mind you, going back and forth. That's right. This is where it all started. started. So yeah. two-hand Drake Rimshaw. Yeah. We had Kyle Newber already jump into the bench and fight Jenks and these other guys. And we, we went to send video. There's no video. We asked them to the league. They said they couldn't see anything. No suspensions came out of it. Now the next night, we go in there. Now another one of our star players is obviously down and out. He's out of the game the next night, and we send it into the league, and you know the, the league decided it was a clean hit, and there's, there's no penalties on the play, there's no suspensions. And this is, this is Jacksonville, a team that wasn't in the playoffs, um, running their mouths during the entire game and you know in overtime you don't see hits like this typically happen but you could tell it was more or less targeted or is how we felt and when we sent it in the league and there was there was no response and there was nothing from them we we knew that the players wanted uh, vigilante justice <laughs> uh, almost a little bit yeah. and so there was no practice uh, that morning yeah. and we had spent a, a good good deal of time talking about it because that was my focus after the game and I let the emotions get the best out of me but at this moment our, our plan and preparation was to win this game it was crucial for where we were um, you know in the standings and, and we had uh, nothing but two points mm -hmm. on our mind at that point even though we knew in the back of our head there was going to be some unsettled business yeah. going on here. So uh, you know, no suspension. You know, you're gonna, you're going back to, Jay, you're going back into that arena. And I knew just when we walked into the arena, you know, the other team, the Jacksonville players are coming in with us. We're coming in, and you could feel the tension just as the two teams are walking in. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of games where you have a back to back, you've got a rough night. A lot of times, that's just flushed. We go on to the next game, but you could tell this one was not. This was going to be carry overnight, and just when guys were walking into the building, you could just. Feel it 100 percent and and you got to love jason christie as well you know smurf he's the most decorated coach in echl history with the most wins and if you understand who he is and the style of game he he's looking at an opportunity here to play into their advantage because they're very similar they were built like us without the skill but they're a tough team and they could handle themselves uh as well too so that was a big one and not to mention ben jones got in a fight the night That's before right. uh, as well too and he picked a tough customer he had no idea uh, who he was or what he was doing and and he paid the price there as well too so they're coming on a high horse even though they lost the game we didn't feel that that's what they were there uh for or that's they didn't have a lot of pride in the wins and so with the fight with jones them knocking out brady shaw with where we were standing i mean of course they're they're you could cut the tension with with a knife in there because we we wanted revenge but we also wanted the two points and it was going to be really interesting to to, to wait and see at the start of the game, but it didn't. We didn't even get to the start of the game before they had sent their message. <laughs> yeah, uh, so you come out for warm ups, and uh, it started at the warm up, and you kind of knew this was going to happen. Both teams come to the blue line. There's a lot of join. I think both teams know that if something happens here during the warm up, it's not going to be good. Uh, so both teams, it was a lot of posturing. Uh, I think uh, it was Taylor Doherty who maybe crossed sticks with a guy yeah. at one point, but. Uh, you know, what is your thought as a coach when you see that? When you see they're coming to the blue line, there's nobody out there, there's no officials out there, and you have no control. You, you know, it can boil over. You were, it happened in Colorado and during the playoffs. You know how a dangerous situation that can be. Yeah, we fabricated the 
situation in Colorado, we wanted that. We wanted yeah. to play the villain. We didn't want to play the villain here. Our, our focus was on winning the game. And, uh, you know, we came out on the bench, and um, even David came down before anything, and he said, guys, you know, again, our focus, to reiterate, we need to win this game. It's not going to be about blood. We wanted to get everybody's <laughs> mind right to, to win. Yeah. And, and we didn't want to focus on just seeking revenge. The best revenge was on the scoreboard. And so, yeah. you know, we, uh, again, we took everybody together we got a clear plan together for the game and it was focused on the game and not retribution and so we came out for warm-ups and um <laughs> we olivia and i were standing next to each other and um it was it was their team that was threatening us to beat us up in the parking lot like, we'll kill you guys in the parking lot and i'm thinking us the coaches <laughs> <laughs> of course you will. Well, I'm glad you have Olivier with you. <laughs> and that's what I'm thinking. I said, Olivier, what's your response? You know. And so, no, we just said, no, we won't. And Olivier will never buy into this or say anything. And at this point, he's he's talking. I, it's got to take a lot to to get somebody off their nerves. And I mean, you know, they're threatening us. And we'll see you in the parking lot. And they're saying all sorts of things. And they're, they're pl our players are listening to this. And they turn around and. Um, I couldn't believe I've never been challenged. I've never been threatened from a player as long as I've been on the bench. And this is my first experience yeah. with it too. So I didn't know. I, did, I didn't have a response. I was looking over at Christy and I'm thinking this is, I just don't want guys to, to get injured or, or suspended at this point. Cause we have nobody uh, yeah. left. Like we had injuries yeah. and we're, we had lost uh, Jermaine Lowen, yes, I think yeah. the night before. Yeah. And um, so we're, we're down to the bare cupboards at this, this point. So we get everything going. The game starts now. Everybody knows that it's going to happen, and it's going to happen early. We're we're going to get all of this out of the way, and it does uh, right right away. Uh, you do get on the board first, which was nice. Sean Sadlowski scored the the first goal of the game, so you're up one to nothing. But then at five forty seven, everything starts. Even before that, we knew who who was doing a lot of the talking, okay, and who was doing a lot of the threatening, and it's the same person. Um, that that had been doing doing all of it, and so who was the first person well, to take a penalty? Emerson the Clark game? took a neen penalty at 156, and when you get a neen penalty, there's a lot of intent there. First shift of the game. Yeah. So again, we didn't have to do anything. Yeah. We came to play, but we knew exactly what they were trying to do, and that's incite some sort of rough violence. And, and we knew that game. He comes out here, he just misses our guy's knee, and so they send a message right away. You know, they're, they're not going to back down. They were here to play. And so we capitalized on the power play, which is one of the, the a great feeling. Because at this point, I don't think they had even had a shot. We had had a power play. We score a goal. And we're, we're off and running and feeling really good about ourselves. And <laughs> this is how badly this game was one side in the first period. You outshoot them 21-3. to three. I think that was yeah. the most uh, uh, shots you had in a, in a period that season. 21-3. to yeah. three. Much, much like the, the refs <laughs> in Florida two of the uh, shots that went down were for icing. <laughs> so Cole had to stop one puck that period. I mean, we had dominated. I mean, do they weren't in our zone except for the time that they scored the one offensive zone goal that wasn't off the faceoff. But, I mean, I've never seen 20 minutes of complete and under domination yeah. before. We were feeling really good about ourselves with just how we were playing. Not necessarily the score, but how we were playing. So we dropped the gloves at 547. Chase Stewart and Clark, they're going to go at it. So you know there's one out of the way. Then on the ensuing face-off, then you get everybody just grabbing people. Gabriel Verpass, Kyle Haas, and Matt Bowdens. I'm sure this is by design. I didn't throw them out. <laughs> they were over the bench before I could even say anything. You know, and uh, you could just tell. Like, these guys wanted it. Like, Hauser, I might have had to... To, to lick up some gruel like he was wanting that opportunity and and Verpass you know I had the luxury of coaching my first three years in this league and he he doesn't run his mouth or anything he just shows up and I've seen some guys really take the brunt end of, of his physical side and this guy's is one of the toughest in the league and we he, we were still fresh into acquiring him I don't even think he had played a home game yet no at this yeah. point and so um you know Verp going over the boards with Hauser and then Bowden's and I'm thinking, okay, one one was there and we didn't wait. Like Christy threw out his guys and I knew it was yeah. time to respond. And anybody who knows that situation would, would have been Olivier. And he saw it right away with the personnel that was going over the bench. And so we didn't even waste time. We said if, if something was going to happen, we're going to get it out of the way right now so we can go and play hockey. And it did. And it was, uh, it was a wild wild ensuing face off because we knew it was going to happen yeah and so at this point it's it's game on yeah so it's something you don't see i think there's three fights going on at the same time uh me doing the call not sure what to say because 
not very often you get three fights going on at the same time, and they were all you know three good scraps. I mean, uh, everybody you know you had uh, I, I, you had thrower out there for for uh, the Iceman, certainly a heavyweight, uh, McKinnon as well, and of course they'll all play into things that happen in the second period. But that is done, so you get all of that out of the way, and you kind of feel like you said it's going to be a normal hockey game. You know, justice has been served. It's going to be a normal hockey game. So let's just get back to playing hockey. Yeah, you you yeah. think it is, but at the same time, Emerson, Clark, and and Stewart. I mean, they didn't. Clark didn't stop running his mouth, right? I mean, there there wasn't any blood, there wasn't anything. It was a fight, but he didn't stop running his mouth. And McKinnon, who's is extremely tough, picked Verpass, yeah. and those guys almost killed each other. I mean, it was the blood coming off their faces was unbelievable. And Bowden's gotten a, a good one as well too. So you'd think you you would have had enough of it. And um, I think yeah, 23 shots of their three or something yeah. like that. And we come out with a with with a lead, and we just wanted to keep going. We just wanted to play hockey. It would have been very important for us to finish that road trip with a win on home ice. But they didn't stop. It wasn't it wasn't that they were interested in coming back in the game, but they wanted that. They wanted that that fight in their game, and they, they didn't want to give it up, and um, we weren't going anywhere. So now here's another storyline to this game. So you're out shooting them 21 to 3, but you only got one goal on the board, and Jacksonville has got one goal on the board on three shots. Cole Kaler started the game, but it was a night where you could tell he just didn't have it. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm not going to get yeah. into it. He, he wasn't yeah. on that night, yeah. and we, we made a coaching change after, uh, or sorry, a goalie change right after that. So... You're going into the dressing room. You're one, one, one. You know you've had all the rough stuff. Your goaltender is now on the bench. You know you couldn't. Dylan Ferguson unavailable, so you got to go back uh, with uh, Patrick Munson. And uh, Patrick Munson, of course, will play into the story here in just a minute. And as far as personalities go, now Patrick Munson, if you're going to jab verbally, I think don't think he's a guy who's going to back down. So he fit perfectly into this storyline. He was probably somebody who <laughs> loved getting into this situation and. Um, you know, Packy was, was really good. If you remember, if you go back and look at the tape, I think uh, there was a shot right before and he just kind of went like this and grabbed it and it was Emerson Clark or somebody and he said, oh, really? That's all you got, eh? And, you know, grabbed it and, you know, he's kind of egging him on at this point. We're, we're uh, dominating. Yeah, so if there's one person, if you wanted to throw into this game to calm things down, it wasn't Patrick Munson. <laughs> no, but again, at this point, we needed to make sure the puck wasn't going in and so... Um, but the, you talk about frustrating and everything from Jacksonville. I think we had six straight power plays to, to their yes. none, right? And so at this point, we got another one, right? We were having another power play. It was a delayed penalty on Jacksonville. They were losing. They didn't care. And but before this, we get to that, there was another incident. Before we even get to that, what happened on the Comet bench just prior to that? No, that's right after. That was the right after. Okay, I'm, see, I'm even I'm, lost. I'm going timeline here okay. to see how it goes. All right, right. So, so we'll we'll start with what with what happened. It's a delayed call. We got Patrick Munson going off for the extra skater. He crossed pass with Emerson Clark, and it happens. Yeah, I, I don't even think they crossed pass. Like Emerson Clark went right out of the way. Like he he was straight beeline. He's making contact with this guy. You could see him locked in. He knew he was going to do something stupid. He's done it before. Um, and so he went after him. And he went right at his head. And uh, Patrick took his two by four and chopped uh, his back legs out of him. And from there, there was no stopping it. It was, it was a built up ball of uh, just rage that came out of anybody. And McKinnon, who was an extremely tough cu customer, who fought Jonesy the day before, he just fought Verpass, um, you know, earlier in the, the first period there. And I don't know why, but he approached our bench much like Kyle Newber did. And so from a coaching standpoint, okay, there was no suspensions in Florida. Newber comes in and challenges the bench and attacks it. And we're, you know, when now we're, we're out, like we had Cody Soul slash, there's no call, there's no suspension. Newber into the bench, no suspension. Then we had Mingo take out Shaz, Shazi, there's no suspension. And then a tough guy challenges our bench. What do you think our players are going to think at this point? Yeah. I mean, you're in Florida, you're not getting any calls. And you see some of your, your most beloved friends, your teammates, down and out and injured, they're going to take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah. Delayed call. Another power play coming up as Mingo touches it up. 
And now look at this, Munson! Oh, Munson's gonna get into it with Clark! Oh, Munson was coming up on the delayed call! Now Clark is in the Comet bench, just getting pounded by the entire Comet squad! Look at this! Clark going up into the Comet bench! Peshnik has got a hold of him, everybody pounded away! It looks like a WWE match down there! Chase Stewart, he is spread out trying to go after Clark! And now everybody trying to get a hold of everybody! Unbelievable! Clark, he has been undressed. He's going to go after Munson again. The Reinsman grabs a hold of him. Tough guy, Emerson Clark. Oh, here we're still going again. Haas now back out there. Munson, he's livid. And Clark has to be wrestled into the penalty box. Now he's got the linesman in a headlock, and the linesman pushes him in. Clark is undressed. And now he... Has undressed the linesman. He took the jersey off the line. So now you've got guys on the bench, and here was my viral moment. Yeah, and I thought it was the greatest call <laughs> in the history of sports history, okay? Like, um, this was one of the best calls. This is what makes for minor pro hockey. I mean, this was, this was the... I mean, you look back, this was fun to be a part of it. I know in the moment, you're just thinking, okay, like I've been threatened on the bench that I'm going to be killed in the parking lot after. And I've got McKinnon coming towards the bench looking at us. And I think, I think Hauser must have leapfrogged three or four guys because if he was in arm's reach of the bench, he, he wasn't escaping it. And McKinnon got an arm's reach of the bench. And from there, it was just an absolute melee of of just fisticuffs going everywhere. At this point, you can't control anybody. I mean, you think about joining in, but then you don't. <laughs> and uh, then you see our equipment manager, Skyler, come out of nowhere. This is, of course, after Haas has thrown 65 punches in 14 <laughs> seconds. And um, he comes over and he, he grasps them. And I wasn't trying very hard to take them off him. But at that point, I mean, we all felt like it was retribution. I mean, yeah. we felt like we had been taken advantage of, we had been beaten up, and nobody was standing up for us. So the only people that were left to stand up for ourselves, if they were going to continue to push and poke the bear, at this moment, this is where guys had something to say. And, you know, it resulted in an absolute melee that hockey fans love. And, um, you know, it was absolute crazy. I think Stewart and Hauser, I mean, really sent a message, which was unbelievable. Um, it was it was just absolute chaos and you can't think you can only react at this moment and that's truly what I believe Chase and Kyle Haas did at this moment was just react uh, on behalf of their teammates and I'll go through the rest of my life always remembering that moment and I, I I was never that moment, and so guys like me always appreciate guys like them coming in first to defend them, and you feel that much safer, that much more protected when you have those kinds of guys on your roster and in your lineup. And I know we we um, we said goodbye to Stewart this this summer, but you can only have so many of the those guys. Like I mean, they're all uh, unbelievable human beings, and to be able to jump in without even worrying about. Uh, uh, an ounce of self-care for for other guys. We really appreciate it. The more we look back on that, and you know, with the whole whole thing happening right there, I believe that was our coming together moment. It was something, and we'll play out the rest of the game. But on the entire flight home, the bus ride home, the the, the social media—that's yeah. all everybody was talking about. And I thought we were extremely proud of the fact that we all stood up for one another, yeah. and it was a group dynamic. But when you're in the moment, it it was. It was a wild, wild scene, and I don't know how the refs... I mean, even after they, they pulled uh, Clark off, he fought a line. And, and, that's, and that's what I was going to bring up, uh, something that I have never seen before. Uh, you know, where I am in Jacksonville, I'm, I'm opposite the benches right uh, above the, the uh, penalty boxes, so I see Emerson Clark jostling with the linesman, and they both go into the penalty box, and they disappear. And I'm almost expecting the linesman to start throwing punches at that point. <laughs> Emerson Clark had the linesman in a headlock. He was trying to jersey the linesman. And he did. And then he jerseyed the linesman, and the linesman's helmet came off. And I'm thinking, I'm, I was impressed with the linesman because if he lets Emerson yeah. Clark go, He's coming right back to our bench, and I can't control what happens after that. Because, yeah. um, so I give a lot of credit to the referees for trying to calm it down and the linesman for wrestling Emerson the way he did. Because as bad of a situation as it is or was, it could have been so much more worse because we were pent up with that, that frustration where if we would have had... A bench clearing brawl there would have been a lot of trouble yeah so it, it's it, it's happened you've you've got uh, 
uh, things are calming down. Now, are you and Coach Christy even eyeing each other? Because I know your old man has had a few incidences. <laughs> he wouldn't. He, he loved it. He wouldn't look in her direction. He didn't care. This It was one of those ones where I was like, okay, this was exactly what we came to get. And, uh, you know, I wasn't upset with Jason Ford. Yeah. He can't control his players. And we all know um, some some guys have a mind of their own, but I, I looked over at one point and he wasn't even paying attention. It was yeah. just like another day, yeah. uh, you know, in the life of a, yeah. a minor hockey league uh, coach. So, um, you know, for, for guys like Jason, that might be, uh, it might be a story of our lives. That might just be another game for, for guys like them. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. So you, you try to get back to playing hockey. Now the punishment is being doled out. And one of the guys who's being punished is Patrick Munson, your goaltender who came in relief. He played uh, 12 minutes and 57 seconds. He is now gone. So now you've got to put Cole Kaler back in, who was a little shaky. That's why he got the hook. So what are you saying to Cole at this point? Just that we believe in him <laughs> and support him. We got his back. And, you know, I think he made a comment uh, where he's like, oh, I didn't even make a save in the first. Yeah. And I said, no, there was that ice and he stopped. And so we're trying to make light yeah, of it yeah. a little bit because we need him, yeah. you know, and we know he's been good. And, you know, sometimes fra fragile mentally, any any player can be. And we, we had sensed that it was unique for him because he was well aware of how he had played. And so we needed him to, to be – you know, at his at his best, and it was a it was a shaky situation to come into in a in a game like that. You start the game, you get pulled, and now you got to go back in. I mean, it's um, it was it was really tough for for a guy like Cole to to handle that, and I f I felt bad having to put him in that situation. So you're leading the game at this point, three one. Uh, you got three goals in the first period, so you you've got the lead here. Uh, but now Cole Keeler is going back in, starting to turn back into a hockey game. But then another incident on the bench happened yeah. with Brett McKenzie, and this was another thing where it was pure chaos. I'm sitting across from the bench. All I kind of see is a little commotion going on down the runway, going back to the dressing room, but I have no idea what's going on. So. Even before that, this we had lost a, a lot of players, right? Injuries. <laughs> we had lost Munson. Then they came and kicked out Stewart. Game misconduct. They kicked out Haas. Game misconduct. Bowden's got kicked out for the third fight. But the big thing that nobody knew is they kicked out Bowden's, but it was only for ten minutes. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so at this point, like our bench is like we've lost four guys on our bench. We're we've got guys in the penalty box, and we, we need everybody that we can get. And Brett just casually said, "Ah, oh, coach." And he's holding his wrist, and he's got blood squirting mm -hmm. two, three feet high out of his wrist. And I'm not a guy that can see blood and handle it. I would never be able to be a nurse. <laughs> and I got a lot of respect for that. But I instantly, oh, my God. And what happened was Alan Lasarchuk was trying to jump onto the ice. Brett's wrist was like this. He slit his wrist with his skate and almost caught a, a vein or a tendon mm -hmm. or whatever it was. And it was an uncontrollable bleeding. So on this whole fran – this is going on during the play – during the game, and so our Matt Willett, our trainer, we've got guys. Um, I don't even think we had enough for the lineup. We're trying to do a change at that point in time. It was just a, you know, we, I couldn't believe this had had happened at this point in time of the game with what we were dealing with. Now we've got, you know, our number one center, his entire wrist had been slit open from a skate, and we're dealing with a medical emergency that nobody saw happen. Yeah. And so now we're going over the PA asking for doctors to come down <laughs> to our room. And people are frantic, uh, you know, scrambling to see what happens. Was it from a fight? What it, it, it and, was just a... Uh, and Max folks were in the building that night too. A hundred percent. And we had just <laughs> spoken to them. They don't ever get to see him yeah. play. And they came down to watch that game. And uh, my God, it was... I just felt helpless for him because he looked at me and it's... it's pss, 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 <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't handle it. It was, it was absolutely wild. But... There goes one of your best players out of the lineup. It seems par for the course, so let's just keep trudge trudging through the game. So that has happened. We've got fights in the first period. You're leading the game 3-2. Uh, you have had the melee in front of your bench. And the thing of it is, this all started the night before, and the one person, Dejan Mingo, is not involved in any of this. Yeah, <laughs> not not in any of it. When he had a lot of other guys do the yeah. work for him. Yeah. You know, that's fine. That's that's <laughs> hockey. You know, we wanted to get retribution at the same time, and he didn't answer the bell. And, um, you know, players have a long memory uh, when it comes yeah. to that thing. So if you ever get the chance, I'm sure we might be here next summer having another conversation. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. We'll keep that one for the, the bank. Yeah, but how does that, you know, you got to think that, you know, that's the guy who's going to answer the bell, who has to, who, but, but he doesn't. So 
what was the situation? What were guys actually trying to 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 get Mingo to? We were just trying to win the game. Yeah. Like our focus wasn't on exacting revenge. Yeah. It was about trying to win a game. And it was Clark who started in warm ups. It was Clark with the knee. Clark with the first fight. McKinnon following up the fight. I mean. You could tell one team was there to play hockey, one team was other, you know, to do a Royal Rumble. And so, you know, we had to oblige at some point, but the two points were way more precious to us than they were at Jacksonville at that that point in time. And you could just see the the mental uh, side of it, to what, what one team wanted to accomplish compared to the other one. So now we got a hockey game. We get back in the third period. You're trying to get the two points. You've outshot Jacksonville through uh, three periods, 40 to 27. And But again... You're going into an overtime situation. It's one of those things where you're, you're shaking your head. You know what? We've won all the battles, but we've not won the scoreboard. Yeah. And it was it was tough, too, because we had played a, a spectacular first period. Second period was an absolute chaos. We had lost five players in the second and a goalie. And then we get into the third, and then it's tied. And I think there's five minutes to go, and, and they scored off of our chest. We were sitting off the yeah. post, and they put it off our chest and into our own net. And I'm thinking, this is just our luck. And so... They, um, we, we had pulled their goalie and we created a power play situation where we ended up scoring. Gallup was scoring a one-timer from Saint, and we get into overtime. And now, this is also, f- from my point of view, this is where the Jacksonville crowd turned on me. Oh, <laughs> because where my radio setup is, I'm actually kind of in the crowd. And when Olivier Gallup scored that game-tying goal, of course, I'm losing it. I'm already fired up from the rest of the game. And that's when the Jacksonville crowd... <laughs> I thought I was going to have to have problems out in the parking lot. I thought you'd be on the ice at some point <laughs> or trying to whack somebody going on with a microphone, choke somebody with a microphone cord. But, I mean, you know, you're part of it, Shane. You know, if we're fighting on the ice, you're fighting up in the stands. So, um, you know, that's what I love. It was one family coming together under the Comet uniform, and, you know, we're all all in it together. I mean, it was, it was a wild, wild trip right up to this point. We had Comet fans in there. And if you're from Jacksonville and you're a casual fan, this is the best night to go see a hockey yeah. game because there's nothing but pure entertainment from an ECHL standpoint of view. You got a great hockey game. You had a, a bunch of fights. I mean, um, this, this was a game that, you, I mean, we're talking about it right now because this is a game that you'll always remember <laughs> for the rest of your life. And it had absolutely everything. And, um, you know, it's just unfortunate that the first, uh, I think we had a great, chance with Petrozelli in overtime right before and then they came back for shot at Yeah, and they the first and, right, the first shot and that just kind of goes back to how Cole Keeler just, just <laughs> did not have it that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I don't want to keep going back right. to him and saying that, yeah. but it was, you know, Adam Carlson was was yeah. an absolute stud and it was like I said that frustrating mounting of we had such a high offensive core and we just weren't scoring goals, but we were running into just incredible goalies at, at this point yeah. in time and so you know, when, when the game was over, um, it was, you could see how everybody had come together. We were talking about it after a typical loss. You're frustrated, you're upset, but guys were talking about it. They were, oh, did you see what Hazard <laughs> read, Stewart? Or that, you know, these guys, it was a coming together moment. They had a great night out, and to travel back home, it made it, even though you've lost, I mean, yeah. it made for, for so much good conversation because yeah. you remember what it was like being in that moment. And so after the fight and after the second period, we had five forwards on the bench, three defense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're sitting down like we had lost half of our team. Yeah. And, um, guys are coming back and they're looking. <sighs> and I said, somebody's got to go back out yeah. there. Like I didn't have anybody to, to work with. Yeah. And so, you know, the fact that we started out so good, then we were down a goal and to tie it up. It just, it was that never ending, never give up, uh, you know, type attitude that I respected uh, the world out of our guys in, in that situation for us. So, all in all, at the end of the day, it was it was a great uh, great road trip just as far as coming together and, and really becoming a team there. 63 minutes and penalties for the Comet, 73 for Jacksonville. Um, as crazy as that was, you know, back in the old-time hockey days, there was a lot more penalty minutes even with that, so it's not even close to even a record uh, for Fort Wayne. Uh, but uh, still uh, a crazy night. And, and, and like you mentioned, you know, the, the travel was actually kind of nice. Everyone was... was uh, uh, together and joking around and, and enjoying what they had accomplished. But now you have to deal with the aftermath because you knew now your team was going to get hammered with suspensions. Yeah, six game suspensions for Haas, six game suspensions for Stewart. And for what a lot of people don't see is those guys have to stay on your active roster. Yeah. They count against your salary cap. So that put us down 
uh, one player the next weekend. We had three and three. I think it was Idaho, Wheeling, and Idaho again. And so we went the next three games without a full roster, and or actually the next six games without a full <laughs> roster. So even though it was a great coming together moment, I mean, it really hurt us as far as where our team was in that scenario. And so the start of the year was great up until Christmas, and then it was that middle you know where we weren't doing well but that fight that that experience that bonding of guys going to war together and coming out of it and we were much better towards the end of the season and you could tell you know we played as a family we played as brothers and as much as you didn't want to see it happen or see that losing um, experience happen it made us that much better and that's why it was so disappointing when the season ended for obvious reasons but uh, we would have loved to see what we would have been able to accomplish there because we were battle tested in that point in time and we know that the playoffs are, are going to be rough and I figured that we we had proven to the point that we could live up to those expectations. And one final storyline from uh, the game in Jacksonville now Emerson Clark got a very big suspension I think uh, you know, 16, 16 games, games yeah. and, you know, I think people may have thought he should have been gone for the rest of the season, but he wasn't. 16 games, and right after he comes off that suspension, he gets traded to Toledo. And we did not get a chance to see Emerson Clark uh, in, a, in a walleye jersey uh, because it did, uh, uh, the, the uh, season was uh, canceled there. But that, uh, after the game against Wichita at home, our final home game, that next night or that Friday, we were going to play Toledo and Emerson Clark was going to be with them. And it just so happened to be 16 games from the point we played Jacksonville <laughs> to the point we would have played Toledo. So his first game coming off suspension would have been on home ice in the jungle against our rival in Toledo who had a problem with us celebrating the only win of the season against them and so you throw that into the mix with what we had just accomplished and I mean we had fireworks and we yeah. didn't know we didn't yeah. we didn't need them but there would have been some fireworks yeah it's unfortunate because yeah that game was a game I, we were all kind of looking forward to just like you said there were so many storylines going into that last game against Toledo yeah well you know for any fans you better stay tuned next year and once we get the building up and running we want to kind of create some more of those memories what's the uh, all-time uh, record for a comet penalty game uh you you've got to, it's into the hundreds i'd have to actually look it up but i do remember it was a game that uh, took uh two years to actually play it was the game was suspended in december it was a game against indianapolis uh the game was suspended uh in december the next time they met it was january they played the final i believe eight minutes of the game before they played the rest of the next game so wow. uh it took two games in two years to complete that game wow so was that a challenge to break that record <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so with that, I think we'll leave it. I think uh, it's been a good conversation uh, to go back and to take a look at that entire road trip. And I think we'll have to do this again. We'll go back and look at some more memorable games throughout the season. And we'll uh, we'll break those down with uh, the guy who knows best, Ben Boudreaux.